So Simon, welcome to the show. How did you find Bitcoin and how has it changed your life? <laughs> um, it's completely changed it in a, in a big way, I suppose. Um, I came across it in 2013, um, right at the tail end of 2013, um, unfortunately, because th there was a big difference price-wise between the beginning and the end of 2013. There was... Um, when I, I, it was about seven hundred dollars, I think. When I, um, I'd, somebody that I'd follow, I was following on Twitter actually um, mentioned it, and I think I'd seen the word a couple of times before. Um, um, someone mentioned it, and and um, and I just thought, what's this Bitcoin thing? And I've always been into computers and love messing around, and and um, you know, I think um, and the, the guy that mentioned it was actually a podcaster, and 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 I'd been into. I think that was one of the things that started to orange pill me even before Bitcoin was the idea of podcasting. And it's difficult to to kind of imagine it now where we've got this podcasting is is sort of everywhere. But when podcasting first came along, it was like anybody can now have a voice out to the world. All you need is a little audio file and you put it on the internet with an RSS feed and and anybody can um can download it and you can say what you want and nobody could stop you and it's um it was quite a revolutionary idea at the time. And um, and so I got really into that idea, was really like taken with what podcasting um, meant. And um, I followed some, I followed a few podcasters on on Twitter and yeah, one in particular um, mentioned, mentioned Bitcoin. And so I just, it seemed like a natural um, extension then. Well, you know, we can say what we want through podcasting and 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 now we we've got money as well that um nobody can stop and and, and i i learned about it as much as i could i listened to some podcasts i listened to um one called andreas antonopoulos did um um the um oh god what, let's talk bitcoin it's called um and yeah there's three hosts and andreas antonopoulos was one of them and um so i listened to that loads and then uh, Mount Gox um, sort of crashed and the price started crashing and um, and I kind of put it on the back burner and um, and we actually moved to Ireland. My my um, my wife's from Ireland and we we decided to move to Ireland and and it, it, we lived there in 2014 and 15 straight after that that period and I just kind of took my eye off the ball really and and didn't and biggest regret of my life I didn't. Um, I didn't buy any more at all during that period when the price was really low because I was thinking, oh, you know, maybe this wasn't going to work out after all. Um, but then we came back to we came back to the UK in 2016. Um, we were saving for a house deposit at the time, and every week I was thinking, you know, if I'd have put put a few grand into this Bitcoin thing, you know, I'd I'd have doubled my money by now. It was going from two thousand to three thousand, four thousand. Um, so spoke to the wife and, um, she, she, she agreed in the end, I managed to convince her that maybe to put a little bit of money in and we put a bit in and, um, right. And that was in, so late 2016, 2017 bull run. And, um, yeah, had, had, um, enough money for the house deposit in the end. So it's, it changed my life in that way to start with. Um, but I didn't. I mean, I understood it and I began, I began to get to that point where I was sort of questioned, like where we all do, where the media is saying like all these things about Bitcoin, how, you know, it's for criminals and all that kind of stuff. And I was thinking, well, it's obviously not. So you, it's when you start questioning the media and it's like, well, if they're lying about this, what else are they lying about? Um, so I, I was beginning to kind of not just think about this thing as a money-making um exercise by then and um but i pretty pretty much had, i had to cash out entirely to get the um to get the house um and then i was so sort of pissed off that i had no no bitcoin left at the end um that i just decided at that point because there was no pressure to to buy anything in particular um just to start dcaing and that was the best decision i made you know so i just started dcaing in 2018 and um and then through that i had a job then that i could I could actually kind of sit around on my ass most of the time, um, waiting for 
waiting for machinery to break in a in a big factory and and um if it doesn't break you get to sit there for hours and i had a longish commute to work anyway so i'd listen to podcasts and when i'd get you know on the commute and then i'd get to work and i'd sit there um i discovered the uh the nakamoto institute website site where there's uh, all those essays classic essays from nick zabo and um you know um alex goldstein i think isn't it um um so i just i just read my way all through that website and um and really started to get it and understand it then but stayed quiet and i never you know I, I didn't really tweet about it i didn't sort of go about trying to seek out other bitcoiners i was the only one that i i didn't i didn't get introduced to it by a friend so i was like the only it was a lonely old journey for a long time i didn't um didn't know any other bitcoiners at all um until um 2022 um early on to 2022 that's when um peter mccormack bought um Raoul bedford and i was on a i was on a telegram group there's a got a te the uk bitcoin Ma maximalists telegram group that we have here in the uk um and I was on there and, and Peter McCormack would, had mentioned, oh, I've bought a football club and I actually worked in Bedford. Um, I was about 10 minutes away from the ground. So um, I started going over there. Um, occasionally when I had to work on a Saturday, I'd go on my lunch break, I'd go to the game. I'd take a, like a late lunch at three o'clock, watch the game and then go back to work. Um, and, and I thought, you know, coming out of COVID, um that it was a good time to probably start a meetup myself so 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 i started a meetup um i started um the northamptonshire bitcoin network and um and it was uh i'd met james actually from bridge to bitcoin first he would he'd just gone along to a game as well and then i organized a meetup one of the away games one of the bedford away games and um and chris came along to that so um so I met James and Chris sort of, you know, through through Peter McCormack, I suppose, in a way. Um and yeah, we realized we had a shared a shared interest in merchant onboarding. Um and that there really wasn't that much going on in the UK in, in that way. Um so we decided to just just like collect our our energies together and and um and do it that way. But one one sort of revelation that we'd had before um through the meetups was that if you if you've got plenty of meetups around the uk or or anywhere um that that really it gives you great leverage in, into um getting the businesses set up because you can say okay i've got you can say to your local butcher well i've got 30 guys at, at the north dance meetup that if you start accepting bitcoin um i'll direct them all towards you um you know and, and i think historically when there was a bit of adoption in 2013 or so um in those early days when everything was still on chain um people put a sticker in the window of their shop but they didn't um but they, there was no connection between that shop and the bitcoin community as it was and i mean even then it was there wasn't much of a community um or uh, you know any sort of network if you like between between other bitcoiners so i think the idea with bitcoin events was to um to help um help people set up um meetups and um and um and, and, and a way to and have a way of publicizing all the meetups because there wasn't a website in the uk and that's um when i started the north ants uh meetup I, I looked online to I thought well there must be a place that I can just list the the meetup and um and people will just be able to discover it from there but there wasn't anything there was bitcoin only there's meetup.com but that's full of um crypto meetups mm -hmm. and you know all sorts of, you got to wade through it and you, you never know what you're going to go to but I thought if I could create a curated website that lists just bitcoin only meetups um then you know other people then can can find the good stuff and not just um, and not have to wade through the crap so um 
so yeah in i think it was april april 2022 i started bitcoinevents.uk and um there was um there was 10 meetups that were existing at the time in the uk and um and i so i listed all them contacted the the meetup organizers and um collected them all together in a in a telegram group and um and then sort of went about i went on a, went on a couple of podcasts and people started to contact me saying oh i'd love to start a meetup my own there's not one you know in sheffield or there's not one in in uh, leeds and and um so people were contacting me and i would just help them through the initial steps and um add them to the telegram group and so we've got um so there's 58 meetups now I've come from in two years we've gone from 10 meetups to 58 um we've got a, a big group of them that everybody's all in that telegram group still and we we are able to um you know share 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 tips and and um about what works and what doesn't work at meetups and also you know I'd, as I, as I'm having to update the website all the time with you know locations and venues and dates of different um different meetups they they are able to um directly to say oh uh, we've changed the venue or you know we've cancelled this month or you know we've you know so I can just update the website so it's a it's a, it's a great um a great way for me to to ease the information I can put on the website. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. that's a lot oh. of stuff I just dumped on you there. But... <laughs> no, it's cool, it's cool. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, it's some of the questions I was, I was, I was going to ask you there anyway. But uh, let's talk a little bit about about, about the the Bitcoin uh, events meetup. What is it? Bitcoin events. What? UK? Dot UK. Dot UK. Yeah. yeah. But, but, but UK. It's also for Ireland as well, though, isn't it? Yeah. So it is. Yeah. That's so thing. as as I said, my Bitcoin wife is Ireland Irish. conference was on it as well yes yeah so i mean there's um what have we got for there's five meet, uh, meetups i think in in ireland there's um there's dublin there is one in offley the the uh bitcoin hideaway yeah there's limerick yeah um there's the original one that was one of those original 10 is the one in belfast yeah um, north yeah the one in belfast yeah the northern ireland one yeah um and is there one more Maybe it's four. I've got a little map here, actually. Um, or maybe the Bitcoin Ireland conference. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. When I'm talking, yeah, I'm talking about like regular sort of monthly things. Yeah. But yeah, the, the, I mean, that's regular yearly one. Um, so, so yeah. I mean, I mean, it's not so like if if you had fifty eight in Ireland as well, I'd probably not be able to keep up with it. But as says <laughs> as it's four or five, it's I'm able to sort of deal with it, and I do get sometimes people's because. I've I've been I've been linking to some stuff on 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 Reddit. I've been trying to um, you know, push some of the the like the newsletter and everything on on Reddit and um and I'll say, you know, it's there's it's BitcoinEvents.uk, but there's stuff, you know, in Ireland as well. And I get people in the comments saying, Ireland's not part of the UK. So <laughs> I don't know that. We know, we know that. Hello, you can't get like, dot uh, UK. We're neighbors. Islands, you know. We're neighbors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very yeah, close so, neighbors, like you know what I mean. It's only a stone yeah, throw yeah. away. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So, and we do get over there quite often. Um, like I said, my wife is my wife's from Ireland, so um, we we head over there quite a lot. And and during that those years where where we lived there, I wasn't thinking along the lines of um, starting meetups and everything. Um, which I kind of regret now. I I I think it's really fertile uh, ground over there. It's such great communities that you've got, and and. Um, I think where we lived would have been would have been a great place to um at least maybe not the meetups but because we're quite rural but um but get a sort of circular economy going maybe um so maybe one day i'll i'll head back over and, and try and do that <laughs> why not why not yeah yeah, yeah. You never know you never know a lot of things change you know you never know where you might be next year or the That's year it. after yeah. well we're gonna so... we're gonna do some exploring of the world and try and find the place that we um we feel like we're at home yeah, the next couple yeah, of years. Yeah, yeah. talk so. to us a little bit about you. Uh, you co-founded uh, Bridge to Bitcoin with James and Chris. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what yeah. inspired you to create that organization, and what is the main goals for Bit Bridge to Bitcoin? Yeah, just just to increase merchant adoption in the UK. Um, we just really we all shared that 
passion that we we thought it's it's a it's a really important part of of the whole the bitcoin revolution you know if if people aren't using it as a currency um then something's gone wrong you know so and people weren't i think we caught it at the right time um the lightning network had really just got to that point where it was um you know it wasn't reckless anymore it was really you know it was it was um really usable and coin corner um came along with their their solution early on was where you could flip straight to pounds um so the merchant could um you could you could pay the merchant in 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 bitcoin and then then it would flip it to pounds so that that gave us that um extra little bit of leverage where a lot of people would be like oh no i don't want to touch bitcoin i've heard it's volatile all that sort of stuff that they could just um you take that worry away from them by saying well you you'll we pay in Bitcoin, but you just receive pounds. So, um, so we caught it at the right time in that way. Um, it, you know, even six months before then, it might not have been possible to do it. Um, and and I think the three the three of us um, kind of complement each other in in our different areas skill skill areas. Um, James is a is a, you know worked twenty years in financial services, so he's he can speak to accountants. He can speak accountant language which i'm terrible at i can't do that um chris is 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 such a is so professional in um everything that he does and and he, he's a great public speaker uh and i've learned so much from the two of them just working with them um you know meetings and things for me were always like oh god i've got a meeting at work or something but now I, we have meeting zoom meetings all the time and um just the etiquette and the the um the way you go about things because they've come i suppose from a bit more of a corporate background and i didn't so um i've learned so much from them um it's been great two years of of um working with them it's it's been another part of the, the life-changing experience um but th yeah so th things have evolved as we've we've um we sort of we, we don't lock ourselves in with any one um solution for for merchants um we just continually look and see what's out there um we're using um swiss bitcoin pay a lot now because it's so simple to to set people up with um there's no kyc um because they're a, a swiss company and the rules are a little bit different over there so you can you just need an email address and you could it could be a burner email address um you sign up with them and we can we can sign people up on a on a zoom call in about 45 minutes to an hour so um from start to finish we you know we go through intros and and um explaining what what we uh, what we do and 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 we get to know their business a little bit and then we figure out um what the best solution is for them and it's not always with bitcoin pay sometimes they want an invoicing service a zap right or something is is good for them then um so yeah we help help them guide them set them up um but then a big part of what we do is the marketing side of it so we we've you know realized along the way is that we're we're a marketing company really that we we set them up um and then we market them out to the to the bitcoin community you know um if you if you're a if you need your boiler fixed and you're in the sort of london area now there was last week there was a, a guy that's um um a boiler repairs so now now everybody knows about this this guy and hopefully all the bitcoiners will um when they need their boiler fixing or repairing servicing they'll um they'll call this guy so yeah. right amazing amazing yeah. and then yeah. regarding community building yeah with uh bridge for bitcoin and uh bitcoin events the the, mm. the, the meetups yeah and mm. um, so building a community is essential for bitcoin yeah and it's an amazing mm. amazing community in in, in the, the people that you meet yeah how the bridge to Bitcoin and the Bitcoin UK events contributes to fostering a stronger Bitcoin community in the UK? Um, by by sort of um, being a, a connected, the Bitcoin events UK, I suppose, acts as a kind of connective tissue, really, between between all those meetups. So so we're able to, um, like I said, you know, if we if if there's a a, a new restaurant that starts accepting Bitcoin in Brighton. We we've got a direct connection to to that meetup in Brighton, 
we can just contact the the organizer of that meetup and say there's a new turkish restaurant in brighton let let your meetup know about it um and and also you know we'll put it out on twitter we'll put it in the newsletter we'll put it get get it out there and market it out to, to the world as much as we can but but um bitcoin events is is it's sort of the bitcoin community side of it and then the um the merchant adoption side is is bridge to bitcoin and the two things work really well together we're we're with one where we're we're building help building the um and bring together all the bitcoiners in the uk and ireland and um on and on the then on the other side we're helping create all these places that that community can then go and spend their their bitcoin and 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 you know hopefully eventually get to a point where they can just live on a bitcoin standard um themselves you know and in certain places um like tooting for instance you might actually be able to um live a little bit more completely on a bitcoin standard now so um yeah. it's just trying to push us towards that world that we that as bitcoiners we want to we want to actually live in you know and it doesn't matter what's going on in the crazy world around us we can we can you know We'll get do our out. own thing get out. it's like we're in yeah. an alternate we'll universe we yeah <laughs> definitely yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. amazing yeah T- talk to us a little bit about uh these cards i've been seeing these cards going around laser eye cards yeah yeah it's a very interesting venture yeah can you explain <laughs> yeah. the little concept behind it and how it uh ties in with uh the broader bitcoin ecosystem yeah well um so chris actually had the original idea um he was um he was at the bitcoin beach retreat um a couple of years ago now um and peter um peter rounce that uh, wrote the the open source standard for the bolt card so coin coin corner came up with the, the idea of the the um the bolt card bolt card yeah um peter rounce wrote an open source um standard for it i guess it's called um um i'm not sure i'm not that super technical in that way but um he he was showing Chris a um what you, you can get these little detector things that um if you're if you're working on a point of sale um system, there's like a little tag that you can use to find where the emitter is that's emitting the um the um electromagnetic field. And um it has a light on it so that when you find it, it it lights up. And Peter was showing that to Chris and he was like, Wow, that's so you know, when you go near the emitter, it actually can energize and power a led and and so straight away that sparked the idea for chris that um that you could potentially put an led in a bolt card so that when you tap to pay the eyes light up you know so um so we tasked um peter with the um coming up with a prototype which he did and um yeah, we we sort of workshopped it a bit and tried to develop um, a way to um, to create them, um, and manufacture them, and um, and yeah, we we sort of you know everything we do that bridge to Bitcoin and Bitcoin events don't make any money. So we thought, well, maybe this is a little side venture that we can do, and this is actually a commercial business. Um, so yeah, it's it's um, it goes. We come up with new ideas all the time. Little things I've got actually. There's one here. Look, there's a. We, this is one. Um, it's a, a Nostra card, which is this is not. It, we sell these. Um, this one doesn't have LEDs actually. Um, so it looks like a normal credit card, but it's it's, it's, it's like a Mastercard. Card. I thought it was a Mastercard yeah. for a minute. Yeah, so it says <laughs> Nostra card on it, and this one's actually good for um, what this. The idea behind this is when you're using Nostra, it's quite difficult to um, to share your NPUB with somebody else if you're meeting them in person. It's a, such a long string, so mm-hmm. this is encoded with your NPUB, um, which is quite easy to do this with a, uh, a a phone app. You can encode that on it, and then and then you just tap it on your on your phone onto onto the somebody else's phone and it will open up your nostra profile on their phone so All right, it's okay. kind of like a calling card a business card um so these yeah just and these are about five pounds so they're, they're much cheaper um and just a fun little thing that we came up with and um and we've got some we've got some uh leather wallets now as well so le- right. laser eyes leather wallets which um you can put your um just your fiat card into 
um, and you can fit a couple of notes in there as well. And it's a sort of a, a nice stylish little leather wallet and they've got LEDs on it. So when you, you can actually just tap to pay through with the card, if you like. Um, um, we've been doing the sleeves for a while. I haven't got one here actually. We just, we've just sold out of them all. Um, but um, it says Bitcoin is better on it. So when you're paying with fiat, it it's just it's a little conversation starter for um, for people. And so, so you can go into like a Tesco's and say to him, "Do you take Bitcoin to the girl?" And she said, "Well, no." I said, "Well, let's just try it." That's exactly it. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, "Wow, all the shops." I, I didn't think we start we took Bitcoin. Yeah, we get so you get that quite a lot, and uh, and things like you know getting on a bus. So we were in London on on Wednesday at the teaching event, and you go go through the underground. Um, you have to tap your card on the turnstiles as you go through the underground. You know, there's a whole crowd of people behind you. So it's just little seeds in people's minds, just little um, it's just little touch points that they, they've then got that they were like, oh, that was a guy paying in the underground with Bitcoin. Amazing. <laughs> Get some yeah. thinking. Yeah. Very, yeah. very good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, the Bitcoin Shop UK, because that's another little venture you're you're doing as well. Is that for all the cards and stuff? Just go into a little no, bit. No, that's yeah. that's really just um that, that one I I um when I was in Madeira, um I went um a February before last, um before the conference and I um I met uh, Nico that runs um um consensus network the the book publishers and um we were at the bitcoin meetup there in madeira and, and um he he had a, a, a load of books there selling at the meetup and i thought this is a great idea why don't we we don't we don't necessarily have anyone that's selling books bitcoin books at the bitcoin meetups in the uk and i thought well you know i'm running bitcoin events uk maybe i'm in a great position to be able to distribute those books around through the meetups um so i asked him if he had anyone distributing them in the uk and he didn't so um so yeah he agree- he, he said um yeah let's set something up he so he supplies me with books you can see some mm-hmm. of them behind me there he oh, sends yeah, me out cool. books yeah um and and i sell them for consensus i've i've, I've just um, my store is i i at bitcoinshop.uk um mm-hmm. there are some other things on there as well and it's not all all the consensus books um we have have some others as well um and the odd other thing um so, so can other related. authors get in touch with you and ask you to put them on there okay. absolutely yeah if people are self-publishing uh books i'm i'm happy to um take it you know take some yeah, books i've got some of Daniel I... prince's books um as well he saw, he'd signed some uh copies for me himself and so i've got some signed copies of of um of um Danny prince's book and, and choose life and um and so yeah it's just, again it's just a, another little side venture um just another another little thing that just kind of linked linked in and that's the thing with bitcoin isn't it it's like it's like a new frontier there's is, everything's yeah the first time everything's getting done it's it's uh it's amazing being involved in in a community in an industry like this that that um there's so many it's like going to a new land you know there's so many i the when you think of something quite often it's the first time someone's done it or it's the first time someone's done it in your area or your town or whatever you know so yeah it's, the, it's the way i look at it the, the way i look at it now is something like what you're saying there about uh, a new frontier it's like a uh... Where, where the the Indians, the the, the 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 first people that went to new lands, yeah, they got the arrows in the back mm. from the Indians and all. Yeah. We're the pioneers now, just going up behind them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. To, to grab the spoils of everything and just, because we have to really do our work now and it's getting bigger and bigger. So maybe in five years time, more people will come in behind us, you know? Yeah. I think every, yeah, every sort of Bitcoin cycle, it's a, it's a, it's like the balloon doubles yeah. in size and and um there's a there's a huge wave and, and we're feeling it already with bridge to bitcoin that um there's a lot of um we're getting a lot of interests coming in now of of um businesses that have heard about us from different podcasts and um chris was on what bitcoin did on the the, the cheat code um he was up on stage at cheat code and we got a lot of um got a lot of inquiries after that um it's just about getting the word out and, and realizing now you know originally we were going door to door knocking on 
on shops seeing if they would wanted to accept bitcoin um but now it's incoming um, now Incoming. It's incoming now. It's bit, it's Bitcoiners that know. Okay, my uncle's got a plumbing business, or or you know, my auntie runs a card shop or something, and she's no idea how to get set up. So it's like friends and family of Bitcoiners that we're we at that stage, and the odd person that's um just comes to us out of the blue that just hears about us, sees us, googles us, or whatever. And, and, and finds out about us so it's yeah it was it will eventually get to the point where we're not able to keep up and and we do it for free so um it's um it's just a lot of time but we, we have a network of, of volunteers as well that are helping us and we need to try and get better at um you onboarding know, them teaching yeah. them to be able to teach others and yeah. um and and we're we're actually kind of in the process of trying to do that a little bit at the moment. Um, we need to sort of like have a cohort of of volunteers that can replicate what we're doing, and and um, because that's that's the only way we can keep up. Otherwise, we're just a bottleneck. To um, you know, we want other people to do the same stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit about. You mentioned something there about the newsletter. Yeah, you've really start. You've recently started a Bitcoin newsletter. What can readers expect yeah. from it and how do you plan to well, use it to further engage with the Bitcoin community? Well, it's it's an, an extension of, of Bitcoin Events UK. So it's it's I, what I used to do was um, I would put out a tweet thread um, every Sunday, which listed all of the, the meetups for the coming week. So on a Sunday, it would have from Monday onwards up to the next Sunday um, of every meetup. But um, it became a bit of a chore to to do that a lot of stuff to collect together um which sounds a bit backwards because now i'm doing it even <laughs> i'm doing even more now um so i stopped doing the tweet thread and i thought actually this would be better if i did it as a newsletter and i like the idea of a newsletter because you've got much more control over it you you know if you've got your mailing list you can take that anywhere you know twitter controls the platform mm -hmm. controls the algorithm um, and necessarily not everybody necessarily sees it. So, um, so with a, I, I really have got a little bit obsessed actually at the moment with um, how to grow newsletters, um, mailing lists, and so the, the the contents of of this of this uh, newsletter every Sunday morning has the full rundown of all the upcoming meetups for the coming week for for UK and Ireland. Mm -hmm. And then the businesses that we've onboarded in that previous week. All right. Okay. And, and then some of the bigger events which are upcoming. So at the moment we've got, um, there's a going to be a Halloween party in October in London. And in Glasgow, there is an event um, at, on the 31st of October, which is um, Alan Farrington speaking at and is a general kind of introduction to Bitcoin, I think, for, for newbies. Um, and that's a one-off event and they're ticketed. So I put those in the, in the newsletters plenty plenty of time in advance so people, if they need to get tickets, can can see those um, in advance. But it's just it's a weekly summary of everything that's going on with the Bitcoin community in the UK. Um, if people want to subscribe to it, it's it's a bitcoineventsuk.substack.com is, um, is the URL for it. Um, it's a free newsletter, so... Um, and, and it comes out at 7.30 every Sunday morning. So I'm trying up. to keep it regular. Yeah, yeah it's a good <laughs> thing to, it's like getting the morning paper, you know, you can uh, wake up and schedule it. Schedule it, go out. <laughs> I do, I do, I do. That's it. I, I, I do. Yeah, I've written I've written next week's already and it's scheduled away now and, and it's uh, ready to go. And that's another advantage over doing it on Twitter, you know, I'd be having to, you know, panicking in the morning oh, i've got to get it out or whatever and yeah um, i might be heading out the door or something and i'm trying to do it my wife's saying get off that bloody phone but yeah. now i can just get it all out of the way and schedule and done yes so, so, so people that want to uh reg uh sign up for that they go to the yeah. bitcoin events uk yeah it's there's links to it on the, the oh, yeah. um the sign up sign up on on bitcoin events.uk you can sign up to it on there um, there's a, a along the tab at the top. There's a newsletter um, tab now, and actually on the main page, um, it it there's a a form to um, just put your email in, and um, and you'll receive that every every morning. So um, yeah, I'm really enjoying doing it. 
it's 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 really good fun and I, I love it's i've sort of gamified it for myself now try and grow the subscribers and um you know and try and get the word out as much as possible because i think that's important there's so many bitcoiners out there that don't realize i'm coming across them all the time that that um don't realize that there's all these meetups yeah no there is yeah and, yeah um, true yeah so we, have to, we have to get the word out there you know yeah that, that, that's kind of one of the, one of the reasons why me and Dinny put on started the bitcoin conference in ireland yeah. you know there was actually no meetup in ireland no. yeah, the only mm -hmm. one was up in belfast yeah and mm. uh he used to drive up to that he did yeah right. uh, wow. to, to, to do that. and i just said to him one day you know no, maybe we should have a meetup in in ireland yeah? yeah and then we picked a date and it started off as just a meetup with 30 people and yeah. then the tickets went and we put up to 50 people and I said to him, okay, let's do 80. And it went to 100. I think the first year we got like 150 people at it, mm. which was amazing. Yeah, yeah. no, brilliant. I, I had it on the website, the first the first one, the first year. And and I've had it on there since. So I, I yeah. just never been able to get over there. Chris came over, Yeah, um, I think last year, was it? He didn't yeah, come last year. Yeah, last, last year. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, he's great. Great, great, great. Uh, great uh, done a great keynote. Yeah, and explained to right. us about uh, yeah. Bitcoin adoption and how, how to take payments and everything it was really really good. Yeah, he's got great energy. He's a great speaker. It's great. Um, he's a great public speaker, which is good because I'm rubbish. So I get up there and I'm all nervous. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> so would I. I'd, I'd be like that as well. I'm, I'm <laughs> nervous, but it's all about uh, practicing, I suppose, yeah. isn't it? Doing yeah, a, I like to more. push myself a little bit. I do do the odd one. I did one. We had a little mini conference in um, in Nottingham um, a few months ago when I spoke at that about the Bitcoin community and and again at the uh, Bitcoin um, the beach retreat in Wales. Um, um, just this this um, last month, I think that was yeah. So um, yeah, I try and push myself where possible. Get out there and speak. It gets easier then, I guess, if, the more you do it. Does it. yeah. Does yeah. So so they say anyway. You know, I, I just start going <laughs> yeah. out there myself and, and yeah. doing more. Uh, let's talk a little bit about education, Bitcoin education. Yeah, we know education is crucial for Bitcoin adoption. How do your projects like Bridge to Bitcoin and your newsletter aim to educate people about Bitcoin? Um, I think meetups are probably the best place in in a way to. For, for someone that's new to come along and and um, and start learning, I think um, it's better than going to university. <laughs> you can't learn about Bitcoin at university, and and the university wouldn't be able to keep up with the uh, the rapid rate of of um, advancements in Bitcoin and stuff. So, you come to a meetup, you get you're getting um, you're getting all, all the the knowledge direct from people that have spent you know usually hundreds of thousands of hours. Um, learning about it themselves um and it's a grassroots movement bitcoin so um so meetups are a great way to learn um there are more i, I was involved um with the my first bitcoin um project um I, I went through the the second cohort i think um to be a um uh, a bitcoin educator i guess doing the my first bitcoin course me premiera um, I haven't actually r r ran the course myself. James has been um, running the course down in Berkshire. Um, but with all these other projects, it's difficult to find the time to um, to actually do a regular, because it's a 10-week so course uh, to run the course. But hopefully I will do at some point. And maybe when, you know, eventually if we we, we do leave the UK and do some travelling in the future, perhaps um, I'll be able to do that maybe while I'm... While I'm traveling around in different, some different communities, I could stay for stay for a while and run some Bitcoin courses. But it is the most important thing I think about Bitcoin because there's so much misinformation out there. Um, you know, usually all the rubbish that the media writes about it, and when things like FTX happen, you know, there's so much misinformation about about what the causes are whether it's whether it's scams or whether it's um you know environmental impacts and all that kind of stuff um it's it's up to us as bitcoiners to educate ourselves with with as of much of the rebuttals to all that rubbish as possible and and arm ourselves with the with the real truth um of what bitcoin means and what can it what it can do for humanity really and what what it 
the the better world it can make. So um, spreading that word, word, you know, as far as and as wide as possible is very important, I think. Yeah, and ed- education is 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 a really really important. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it, I think it's one of the main main things out there. People need mm-hmm. to start learning about Bitcoin for themselves. Yeah. Anyway, because as you said, there is so much nonsense out there that we've been listening to for the last fifteen years. And the truth be known, it's been pumped out from the people that don't want us to really learn about it. Yeah. No. No. Uh, no. You know? It's 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 up to us to 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 sort of get out there and do it. And if, if all we're doing is going to work every day and coming home and doing that same cycle and, and listening to a Bitcoin podcast and, and then going back to work the next day and what, what, what's it all for at, at the end, you know, we've got to, we've got to get out there. And, mm-hmm. and if, if all you do is, is go to your local meetup and support them. Um, but we've got to get out there and do something. Um, and yeah. sort of push push this revolution forwards because yeah. if you just sit at home and hodl Bitcoin and and you know don't do anything then then what's it not all gonna for? get anywhere? And, Nobody's and... gonna learn about it. So look, look at all the no. people that are involved in it, like Sailor and like even all these big wealth yeah. wealthy people and millionaires and billionaires now. You know, yeah. like it, it Bitcoin changes you. Yeah, yeah. They've gone I from think... them huge corporations and now they've stepped aside from from them. The corporations are still running their business around, but but they're all in now and and and, and, and uh, yeah, educating these are smart about people. Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, I think it's it's the most important thing really um, that we can do. So yeah, we just have to get out there and um, and, and I think Bitcoin in, makes us. We get so passionate about it that we just. I mean, we you know most of us don't shut up about Bitcoin all the time. So it's um, it makes us get out there and talk to people about it and um so it's it's changing people like you said it's changing people that aren't that weren't maybe that were very sort of selfish perhaps before that were just trying to hoard hoard um well you know i suppose most people don't say but they're 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 stepping on everybody else's heads to try and get ahead in life but bitcoin changes that and and it make makes people um want to work for free you know like like all these projects that i do now are, are because i'm very passionate about it um the old me pre-bitcoin probably would have thought what why and the hell would i be spending all my time doing something that doesn't make me any money um it's because it's going to make a this is for the future for the children and going to make a better world um for everybody so so it's changed me in that way. It's changed me into become, I suppose, less selfish and, um, and use my time to try and help others and, and grow something here in the UK that, um, that's, um, going to improve the country hopefully. And we need that now. Yeah. Oh yeah, we do. Definitely. Especially with all the stuff that's going on over here at the yeah. moment. in Ireland and yeah. the UK, you know, where people know what's going on. They can see what's going on. So, um, mm. Yeah, different times. Yeah, and yeah. Tough times coming. Like, uh, yeah, it's not going to get any better um, yeah. for a while, at least. It's going to be a while. So, yeah. So, um, regarding yeah. challenges and your uh, and opportunities, what do you think are the, some of the biggest challenges that you faced in your Bitcoin journey, and how have they shaped your approach to your current projects? Um. Oh, I'm not sure the the challenges. Um. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, one one challenge is, it, it, you know, leading up from what I was just saying is is do do. I'm I'm always conflicted about do I. For me personally, the best thing probably would be to just work at a fiat job, five six days a week, and earn as much money to buy as much Bitcoin as possible. But I take as much time off of work as I can possibly afford to spend with on bridge to Bitcoin and Bitcoin events. Um, so I'm constantly conflicted thinking, you know, maybe I should just stop doing this and just stack as much Bitcoin as possible, you know? So um, that would be a better thing to do, a wiser thing in, in a lot of ways, but, but um, so there's that, there's that conflict, but, but yeah, um, um, yeah, I, d- I don't know what other 
problems. What, what was the question? The, the, the problems? It's just the biggest challenges. and Challenges, yeah. yeah and opportunities yeah, I, yeah, that you've yeah. seen. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah, as far as like onboarding businesses, um, we, we, you know, we get, we get the odd person, especially, you know, we're, we're, with Tooting Market, for instance, at the moment, um, you know, which is going great. And there's, there's, um, we've got about 12 businesses now um, in, in Tooting in, Market. All in, set yeah, up. in the market, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you've heard much about what's going on there, but but um, we're trying to get as many of those businesses set up as possible. But there's there's one or two that are very resi resilient to it. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, that's no big deal because, you know, we've got so many in there. We can just... You know, it, it reminds me of those early days when we were going business to business and we would get knocked back by so many people like, you know, and it's disheartening when you go out for a day trying to find and you get maybe one or two leads after going to 30 businesses. Um, but but now, um, but now, you know, it, it doesn't matter so much, but but um, we, have, we have had the odd one in, in Tutin that doesn't want to get on board, but we've got so many down there now that it's really become this um, sort of, I mean, it's going to be something really quite unique in, in, in potentially like the whole of Europe. I mean, there's going to be nothing um, at, like it in, in Europe. There's Lugano. It's got a lot of merchant adoption, but they're kind of spread out over the mm -hmm. country um, in Tooting. It was probably going to be the highest, density of of bitcoin accepting businesses in in europe i'd say by the time all right done. okay amazing um so so yeah, how many, a, how many are, are in the market how many stands are in the market how many people are in the market um business yeah how many businesses are in there i would say there's 40 all right so okay. maybe right. yeah maybe around about 40 maybe maybe a few more i was thinking um this morning actually i should um because somebody online was talking about um doing a map and and sort of you know showing which ones are actually accepting bitcoin because you have to kind of go around now and look for the bitcoin accepted here stickers um but um yeah maybe that's someone uh, like a, if there's Tell a them all them. Gra graphic <laughs> artist <laughs> all of them <laughs> well ev yeah, eventually that eventually it will will be all of them but um yeah. yeah if there's a good graphic artist out there that wants to do like a um like a floor plan um and, and so that we can color them in as, as we as they turn orange you know would be a good little project to do um but um yeah we we're um yeah there's about 12 so far at the moment and nice. we've got there's a lot more that um are ready to come on board and yeah, on the board, event you know, on the process. we've got some of the some of the important ones um, we got on Wednesday, there was a big meetup on Wednesday and there was 70, it's around about 70 Bitcoiners um, came to the meetup. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we got the main, there's a, it's called Boom Back Burgers and it's a, there's a big bar and a burger joint sort of next to, there's a big central seating area. Um, we got them signed up on, on Wednesday before the event. So um so that's an important one because now you can, because there's a big screen there and there's sort of picnic benches around. It's an indoor market. Um, and, um, and there's a Jamaican food um, place called the Lone Fisherman. That's right on the center as well. We got him signed up too. So you can really just go and get food or drink in any of the different um, venues there and uh, or businesses, and then come and sit in the central area and eat your food you can go there during the day it's like a co-working space um if you want to go there and spend your day working on your laptop um it's free for anybody to just go in and you can just live on bitcoin now there's there's other businesses too there's a record um a vinyl store there's clothes shop there's card shop um jewelry there's all sorts of things there um amazing so amazing. yeah it's a really um it's really something um it's because the word is only just beginning to get out about it but it's um there's nothing else like it in the uk and i think these indoor markets are actually a good a model to try and target in the future um yeah so so um yeah it's a good proving ground that um for a bitcoin adoption because they're all um they're all owned by the, the people that run them are own the businesses you know because mm -hmm. there's 
quite often you go into a business and it's like, oh, the boss isn't here. And it's a, a decision a boss has to make, you know, the own yeah. business owner. But, but, but the thing about it is, well, it's going to change their mindset. Once they start looking at Bitcoin and they start looking at more videos and understanding about uh, Bitcoin, yeah. they're going to start looking at what is money, all this type of stuff. And they change their yeah. lives completely, like yeah. the way it's changed their lives, Simon. Absolutely. It, and and it, that's the way that we have found that it's a different kind of orange pill. It, they they start getting bitcoin and then they're seeing the value of it going up and i think from there was a bit of a dip on tuesday wednesday wasn't there and and um um we had the event those new businesses the bar must have taken you know a good few hundred pounds through through the night but there was a queue at the jamaican food place and he was a bit skeptical beforehand um but then was it like one two o'clock in the morning the price started to Right. to uh yeah. shoot back up again and i was thinking this is great because he, he's gonna took, look at you know, that he, now he probably took 100 so pounds and now he's looking at it thinking yeah oh, it's 110 it that, actually <laughs> had it. well, it's gone up yeah um yeah. so that it gets you start to think okay i need to look into this um and he, he was a little bit you know he was talking to me about the bristol pound and things like that so he was um you know, he was a bit alternate thinking already. Yeah, so yeah, I think yeah. um, it's, it's just planting these little seeds. Yeah. Gradually, gradually, and then suddenly. We, yeah. we know, you know what I mean? We, it's not Air Force Rodeo. So um, and over time, that's all we need, a bit of time. So, yeah. Simon, looking ahead, where do you see uh, the Bitcoin space in the UK and going forward? A bit of future vision. And what role do you would you like to play in the future of Bitcoin development in the future in UK? In Ireland, yeah. just um, for me personally, more more businesses accepting Bitcoin, more meetups as as sort of Bitcoin hubs around the UK, um, more points of contact for people that when they start to get curious about it, they can say, "Oh, I've seen signs about the um, you know the Suffolk Bitcoin meetup or the the Bristol meetup, you know, about different." That, that every area of the UK has has a central place that when people start getting curious about it, they can they've got somewhere they can go and learn from people that are knowledgeable and can can guide them in, in the right direction, and they're not having to uh, deal with shit coiners and a load of rubbish, you know. Yeah. So so for me, it's yeah, it's growing, it's growing more more Bitcoin meetups, more more and more adoption, and that that's what's happening. Um, We've got 400 or so businesses now in the UK accepting Bitcoin. So it's just about doubling, trebling that. Um, so that it doesn't matter what's going on in the crazy world. We we can we can do our own thing and everybody else can jump on and figure it out as they go along as well, you know. Amazing, so, amazing. So, good stuff, good yeah. stuff. So Simon, if somebody wants to get in touch with you, what's the best way to get in touch with Bridge for Bitcoin and the newsletter and the website and... Us yeah so well there's a, i guess a few links um the the uh, bitcoin events.uk is is the the meetup website and it's got everything for ireland and, and the uk um uh, it's a it's a full list um of what's happening all the time it's all updated every every other day or so um and um so there's that bitcoin events on on twitter my personal um handle is hoddle solo on twitter that's just from my anonymous days. I was, I was, it was like a hand solo um, um, guy originally on there. Um, so it's Hoddle Solo on Twitter. Uh, there's Bridge to Bitcoin on Twitter as well. Bridge to Bitcoin.com is our website. If you know anybody um, that um, wants help getting set up um, to accept Bitcoin um, in their business, um, Bridge to Bitcoin.com, you can contact, there's a contact form on the website. Um, you can use to get in touch with us or, or get in touch on on Twitter uh, or Nostra. We're on Nostra as well. Um, so, yeah, and, and the newsletter, like I said earlier, is is a great way to um, keep in touch with what's going on with the community, you know, when all the meetups are and what new businesses have just started accepting Bitcoin. And that's that's bitcoineventsuk.substack.com. Perfect. So to... There you go, everybody. Sign up for the newsletter and uh, keep in touch and uh, what's going on uh, with Bitcoin in Ireland and the UK. Get weekly information every Sunday morning, 7.30 in the morning, so you can plan your week ahead. 
And yep. Simon, thanks a lot for your time. Really appreciate it. And uh, no we will meet in person very soon. Yeah. Yeah. Sometime yeah. soon. Yeah. And uh, keep doing amazing work. Yeah. Well, thanks ever so much for having me on. It's been great. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.